more again. See how happy she really is about that book. I await your command. So life in the wilds must have been very lonely. At times, perhaps. A world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, twas to the trees. Uh, that sounds wonderful. For a time. But one can only remain a child for so long. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. Uh, what happened then? Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. Hmm. But you were just a child. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. But you don't need to live that way any longer. Do I not? I am still an apostate mage, even if I have left the wilds. The Darkspawn are yet undefeated. No, there is much that remains. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely, but such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. Mm. Uh, let's see what we else can give to people. Hmm. Tree amulet. I wonder if she wants it. Oh, how dear of you! Thank you so so much. Um, there's someone who wants painting. Um, she wants bones. Let's give him. Him and her? Huh? Okay, we can have another. <laughs> I think he's the one that wants painting, so let's try giving him one. I am impressed. My thanks. It is. Uh... Unexpected. Thank you. We do not have any, have any more. I think. Let's go talk to him, see if we can befriend him. Yes. Mm. What were you doing in that cage? Sitting, as you observed. Uh, that's, do you have to be so little? Or? No, it's a choice, not a necessity. Uh, are you going to ask, answer my question? I did. Parshera, was there anything else? I have a question. I am hardly surprised. Why did you come to Verbelden? To answer a question. Uh, 
What was the question? The Arishok asked what is the blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. Oh, Ugh, I don't know how much you missed. But, well, I'm talking to Wynn about... Kitty, please. Um, about... Uh, well, that she's tired, and I talked to Stan. I don't know if you saw that. <sighs> Never mind about that. It's not important. It's just me making friends with everybody. Um... I'm sure you've been kicking around for years yet. Oh, I don't know. I really don't. Well, okay. You're loosed in. Here I am. Care to answer some questions? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Um... Tell me a little about Antiva. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Farellian. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. Uh, don't you want to go back? <sighs> it's not really a matter of wanting to go back. I cannot go. At least not yet. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from someplace comparable? Mm. I'm not from any glittering gem, no? No? That is too bad. If you were, then surely you would spend as much time boasting about it as I do. Hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. Mm. Is that some kind of if you... you that works. <laughs> it may as well be, but not this once, no. I mean the smell. For years I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home more than anything else. sound like you've been away from home forever. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in a store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? Is still there, Severin. True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a beautiful Grey Warden, a woman who then spares my life? I could not. Ah, uh, now you're flattering me. I say you are beautiful because it is true. Should I not? Mm. No, by all means. And glad I am to hear it. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Right. So, um... Yeah. That's it for today, I guess. Um... Bye for now. <laughs>